Hey everyone, it's Ken Pauls from SkillWave here. I'm hanging out with my data monkey and I thought that for this video here, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I usually do with my monkey shorts. So this is gonna be a little bit longer. Uh, as many of you are aware, we actually run a bunch of different training programs at SkillWave, including the Power Query Academy and the Self Service BI Bootcamp and other different courses. And with each of these, you get forum access to a curated forum that is maintained by Matt Allington and myself. And what I'm gonna show you here is actually a solution to a question that got asked inside that help forum. Um, and I thought this was just kind of an interesting use because it actually allows us to explore how we take multiple different recipe patterns that we have for the Power Query Academy and put them together to unwind a kind of a complicated data set. So let's, uh, let's go and hop in and take a look here. Um, what I've got is I've got a table that looks like this. And I don't know 100% everything that was happening here. I'm not really that concerned about it. It was just more about getting the structure. Uh, what I can see here is it looks like it's a sort of a user entry template where we have some individual days. We've got some merge cells across the top here for the 18th, 19th, 20th of October. And that continues across for uh, seven days altogether. We have some different resources here. Again, this is merged and rotated uh, along the side here, but obviously it bands all these things together. And the secret to understanding this data is to recognize that in every single one of these blocks, which is uh, six rows tall by three columns wide, we have data point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And this is the important thing to realize that data one and two are always on the first row, Data is three and four are always on the second row, five is on the uh, third row and so forth all the way down this. So the values can be textual, they can be numeric, it doesn't really matter. The big question is how can we take this and unwind this into an unpivoted tabular format that looks like this? So we've got our resource A down the left hand side with the individual days that we have here and across the uh, columns here we want to have data one, data two, data three, data four. The important thing to realize here is that I don't believe the user gave me the real column names here. I think this was all sanitized for, uh, for my benefit, which is awesome. That's what we love to see. The question is, how can I actually get that out? So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you the solution that I built. And uh, I'm just going to go and uh, pop this up here. And the first thing I want to sort of point out here is this actually um, combines two different recipe, pat recipe patterns that we have. One is unpivoting subcategorized data and the other one is pivoting stacked tables. And there's a couple of different tricks in this. The first thing is around the unpivoting of subcategorized data. We actually use a structure like this for big data patterns. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna just open up my raw data query here. And you'll notice that this is just a query that reads the named range from the current workbook. And I've used named range, I don't want a table because I don't wanna lock these things down with weird column headers and I don't wanna blow up the formulas. The challenge is now I've got a resource in row one, I've got my October 18th, 2022, and then I've got null, null, because that's what happens when it separates those merged cells. And then we get to October 19th and null, null, so forth. Now the overall solution, similar to what we actually see for our subcategorized data recipe, is it works like this. We've got a raw data uh, query. We then make a query to generate the good header row that we can use for unpivoting data. We have a data table that involves everything except the header row. And then at the end, we actually reference the header, append the data, and then do the rest of the magic in that. And by separating this off, it actually makes it perform fairly well. So I'm gonna close this, and we're gonna go and take a look at the header query first. Now the header query, we start off here, we look at our raw data table, and what I'm doing is I'm keeping just the first row that has my resource header as well as my individual dates. Just like we do in our subcategorized uh, or unpivoting subcategorized data recipe, we're gonna transpose this. And then we do a little bit of work here that's actually not in the recipe, but um, this is tailored to this data set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna promote the headers. So resource goes to the top. Now it gives me just the dates. I'm gonna change those to be just a date. I wanna drop the times, fill it down so that we get multiple instances. Because when I flip this back, I need to have three columns for October 18th, three columns for October 19th. Problem is, you can only have one column with the same name. So I'm gonna add an index column here, and what I'm gonna use is I'm actually gonna use something for our stack data recipe. I'm gonna use this modulo to convert this. So instead of going 0, 1, 2, what we're gonna end up with is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So we don't have the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And what that indicates is this is data point 0, 1, and 2 for October 18th, 0, 1, and 2 for October 19th. 
I'm then gonna merge these columns together with an underscore at the end, separate from the dash. This is an underscore and there's a reason I did that. And then I'll rename it back to resource because when I merge the columns, it changed the column name. And then finally, I'm gonna demote that back into the headers. So resource is now at row one, change the data type, although it actually didn't, it left it as any, but whatever. And then I'm gonna transpose it back. And we now have a good header row that has our resource, our October 18th for 00, October 18th for 01 and 02. So these will now be unique when I lift them to column headers. And then we get into October 19th, 01, 02, and so forth. Now the data query itself also references the original raw data. But you'll notice that the only thing I do in here is we had this one header row in the raw data. I'm just going to remove it. So basically what I've got is I've got a header row or a header query that has one row that just has the headers in it. And then I take this data and I remove the headers from it. And the reason being is because the headers here have these null values in which I don't want. So by cutting those off and having a good query here that gives me good column names, I can then reference this one, which is what I did in my output query. You see it says equals header and then we can append the data to it. So basically I've swapped out row one with a good header here, okay? So that's the, the whole goal of that transposing, filling up and down. And now when I promote my headers, you'll see that all of the headers work nicely. So there's resource, there's October 18th, 00, 01, 02, and then the 19th, 00, 01, and so forth. Now the next thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna go through this and I want to unpivot my data, but before I do that, I'm gonna do a little bit of prep here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fill down the resource column to make sure resource A is uh, filled into all those nulls and then resource B into all those nulls. And then I want to make sure that when I unpivot the data, I don't lose track of where I am because there are six rows of data inside resource A, six rows in B, six rows in C. And I need something that I can make sure that I resort this data into that exact order because that's gonna dictate which data points go where. So once again, I'm gonna to reach to that stacked column recipe. We're gonna go add an index column. Let me just go and rip all the way across to the right-hand side so you can see it. So there it is, row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. And then I'm gonna go and calculate a modulo on this again. And now what you'll see is that we get row zero through five, zero through five. So when we actually go back and look at this, this is resource A, row zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then we get to row zero for resource B. This is really, really useful because now I can select the resource column, select the row column, and unpivot the other columns. And when we do that, you can see here's all my resource A, here's all my row numbers going down to zero and then going to one. The challenge as you can see right now though, my data is all scattered in orders here. I, I don't really, can't really see which data point would go into which column at this point in time. It's really, really difficult. So here's where the second part of this really comes into play here. Remember this little header row that I built that had 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1? Well, we're gonna split by that delimiter to get to 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And now our date column is just plain old dates. What I'm gonna do at this point is sort it all. And I sort it first by the resource and then by the date to group those together. And then I sort it by the row number and then the column number. And what's really, really interesting about this, you can see the values that we've actually got here. These are the raw values from the worksheet. Those are the textual versions here. Row zero, column zero was data point one. Row zero, column one is data point two. And then we get to row three or sorry, row two in the data set, which in, in here is row one because Power Query starts counting from zero when we do this. So that gives us data point three. Our one and one is data point four. Two gives us five. Three and zero is six. So this is actually nicely pulling all of these things out. It's actually naturally sorted it into order the way that we work there. Now, that's cool and everything else, but I now need to get all of these data points into the appropriate rows that go with resource A and the date. So this doesn't involve an unpivot, this involves a pivot operation. Before I can do that though, I need to make sure that I've got a good header column that I can use across the top. So for that reason, I'm gonna go and add another index column that's gonna give me a bunch of row numbers. And once again, I'm gonna calculate a modulo across this. 
So we now have 10 columns that we're actually going after here. So you can see we've got zero through nine and we've got zero through nine and zero through nine. And those line up, data point one is a zero, data point 10 is nine. Okay, so we're just offset starting counting from zero there. At this point, what would happen is one of two things. What I did, well actually one of three, I guess. What I did is I added a new custom column here. And in this particular case, I just used a simple little formula to basically say, let's take data. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, append the index column. We're gonna add one to the value there, convert it to text and, and append it at the end of our data. So at that point, we've got our data one, data two, and that's why we go from zero to one, from one to two and so forth, from nine becomes data point 10. For the user who posted this, most likely what's gonna happen is one of two things. They're either gonna write a conditional logic formula to say, if it's zero, give it this column name, if it's one, give it this column name, if it's two, give it this column name, etc. Or they're gonna pull in another data table that says data point zero hat equals this column, and they're just gonna merge that against the index column to come up with the correct column names. Once we've got all this prep work done though now, we can go over to removed other columns here. And this is where I basically said, okay, I'm just gonna get rid of everything that's irrelevant here. I need my resource, I need my date, I need my column names here, but I need those across the top, and then the value is what needs to be filled in in the middle. The important thing to realize about this is that the way that this has all been set up here is that every intersection between resource, date, and column name is unique, and that's important in this particular set here because that allowed me to go and grab this column, column names, and choose to pivot it. And what that does, it says all of the unique values in here will become our column names across the top. So when I go and take a look at this, you can see that it pops everything into order nicely. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across, our data one, data two, data three, data four. And you can see that on this next row here, the data that I chose, I just put a one in front of all the values I had on the first row. So we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I just marked in as it could be text and so forth. But I can actually tell by looking at these things the way I organize the data that everything is sorting into the correct columns. The trick on this one here, and this comes from our pivoting stack data recipe, is we pivot our column names and we're gonna choose the values column. That was where all of our individual textual items were. I'm just gonna go and drop back and take a look at that for a second. So we select column names and pivot it. And then we say, we want these to fill in the values area, the bottom right hand corner of this, similar to a pivot table. The trick though, is that we have both numbers and text in this area. So by default, what will happen, and it's hidden under the advanced options, is that it will try to count it because there's text in there and we don't want that. Instead, we wanna choose this don't aggregate. Now again, back to that comment about how the intersection of all these points was unique, that's important in order for this to actually work. As long as it is though, when we say don't aggregate it, that's why we actually get back the textual data points here. So if I now go back and take a look and say close and load, we can actually hop over to the output page and you can see that all of this has come out nicely here. And I could even go back over to the raw data page and say, you know what, let's go and fill something in here. This is gonna be 21, this is gonna be 22. Uh, this one here I'm gonna put in as uh, 23, uh, 20, we'll spell that one out, uh, four. Oh, let's try and spell it correctly here. Uh, we can go 25, um, let's try this, 026. I'm not sure what'll happen with this one, if it's gonna try and convert it to values or not, but we'll find out. 027, uh, this one will be 28, uh, 29, and this one will be 30. All right, so we've got a mixture of text and values for October 21st. Let's go hop over here, gonna go to data. We're gonna hit refresh all and you can see that all of these values have come in and based on the fact that I chose the last number to be representative of which column position it should be in, you can see that those have all shown up nicely. And as a matter of fact, even these two are showing up as leading zero textual numbers exactly as I put them in. So, so there we go. That's kind of an interesting look at a, uh, a problem that was presented in the Skillwave customer forum um, for uh, one of our members of our Power Query Academy course, where we actually took a couple of different recipes and combined them. So I hope you find this interesting and, uh, and maybe get you thinking about uh, the way that we can actually do some of these. And uh, if you're interested in checking out more resources, you should definitely come over and check out our courses at Skillwave.